guys, so today I'm going to provide you with a few beginner decks. If you don't have any yet, you don't really know where to start. Uh, now I did title the video Tarot because I'm assuming that if you don't have any decks and you're looking to get your first ones, that you're not going to know the difference between Tarot and Oracle decks. Um, I am, however, going to pretty much show Oracle decks because I do believe that Oracle decks are better suited for beginners. Now, the reason that I think Oracle decks are better suited for beginners is specifically because they don't really require a lot of memorization or study or anything like that. Tarot has a lot of um, symbolism and requires quite a bit of study to understand the way the system is built. Um, if you are interested in understanding the difference between tarot decks and Oracle decks, I made a video about it specifically and I'll put the link right here so you can go watch it. Um, but Oracle decks they're just a lot simpler and easier to use moving at the, when you're first starting out. So I'm going to recommend three Oracle decks and one tarot deck. Now, if you're following me on Instagram, and if you're not, you should be, uh, my feed already has a bunch of photos of this deck, and I wrote a blog about it that I published on my Facebook page, and I've kind of beaten this horse to death. It was also in my Tarot versus Oracle video, so I really... <laughs> really been pushing this deck hard but my absolute favorite oracle deck which is almost a tarot deck um, is the psychic tarot for the heart the reason that this deck in my opinion is so beneficial and so amazing is because it really does push you to use every person and relationship that you encounter in your life as a mechanism for growth and healing it comes with this uh, little bitty cute book, which is honestly <laughs> phenomenal. Like it has um, an entire color association section. So if you're curious about the symbology of various colors and numerological meanings, they have all the numbers and their meanings. So it's, it's I mean, for being this tiny little book, it's chock full of information and has like, the introduction is beautiful. The cards themselves are beautiful. They have this like gold gilding on the side, which, oh, so pretty. And I love green, it's my favorite color. This beautiful green, probably out of focus. This is probably out of focus, right? right. In focus here, maybe, hopefully, I don't know. I can't see the back of the camera. I have no idea what's in focus, sorry. There's a really good chance that this video is going to be highly out of focus, so super sorry. The backs of the cards are beautiful and green and symmetrical and oh, I fucking love them. The artwork on the cards is really amazing also. One of the things I like to do with this deck, because it is relationship-based, when I encounter a new person in my life, um, and I know I'm going to be seeing them around more, like, a new friend or a new colleague or a new acquaintance or somebody that I have an immediate connection with, one of the things I will immediately do is I'll go home, I'll grab this deck, and I'll ask them what this person's purpose in my life is or what my purpose in their life is, and I'll pull cards, and it's oh, so amazing. If you follow this channel now or continue to follow this channel, what you'll find is that I'm really, really particular about my card Oracle card stock and finish size. I'm I'm real picky about it. This deck is a good stock. You hear that? That's not a flimsy piece of shit card. I hate when cards are made super thin and cheaply and flimsy and they like bend really easily. This card, these cards have been through hell. Like I've used the shit out of these cards and they're still like solid. It's a good quality stock. So if what you are looking for in a deck is something to help you grow personally or to analyze relationships, Psychic Tarot for the Heart is going to be ideal for you. So the second deck that I'm going to recommend is relatively new to me. I've only had it for a few months and I actually also mentioned this in my Tarot vs. Oracle video. So being a little repetitive, I know that, but only because it's fucking awesome. It's the Work Your Light by Rebecca Campbell. I'm not sure if it's Campbell or Campbell, so sorry. She wrote a book called Light as a New Black, 
which is also fucking awesome. And I will put the link to this in my description box as well, as well as everything else here. This deck, of all the decks that I own, and including the Psychic Terror for the Heart deck that I rip about constantly, this has the best fucking stock and feel of any deck that I own, period. Just period. I love that the inside of the box says you are the Oracle because yeah, this deck is really good specifically for anybody who is trying to um, ascend spiritually and work on spiritual transformation. That's what this deck is built for and it is fucking phenomenal. Also, the artwork in here is fucking stunning. And I love that the information is on the card. Yes, there's a whole long description in the book, but the card itself kind of has enough where you don't necessarily need to dive into the book. So this one says, don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? So it's a nice like prompt. And if I were to use this deck and I was to pull this card and I were to get that question, I would journal on that subject and it would assist me in my growth. Also, these decks are matte. You see how it's not a glossy coating? Oh, I literally cannot tell you how happy that fucking makes me. Also, the corners are rounded, which I like. Um, and they aren't too large. I have short, chubby little hands. So I really hate when decks are giant. And to be honest, I don't fucking know why. But it seems like most Oracle decks are made giant like obscenely large for no reason and i don't understand why but these ones aren't too big i can legitimately shuffle them like i can actually take them i might be able to do it in the air let's see if i'm good enough to do this in the air eh. <laughs> no no i can't one eh. I'm, i don't know if i'm in frame at all Ooh, I can do it in the air, kind of, shittily, but I did it. Hey, <laughs> my point is I can actually shuffle these. It's a lot easier when I'm actually on a table, like, or in my lap. There's a lot of Oracle decks that don't shuffle like that. And I know that seems nitpicky, and that this is your beginning, you're just starting to get some decks. I promise you, the points I'm making now, you will realize later, were vitally important. Being able to shuffle a deck, let me see. So, small, short, chubby hands, and I can do it. So, just for comparison, so you can see what I'm talking about. This is, um, what is it called? Oracle the Shapeshifters. And I do love this deck. It's really cool. The artwork's cool. The meanings are cool. Interpretations are cool. I love it. But they are thin, very thin, very flimsy, very fucking large. I'm very glossy. If you're new, let me explain to you. Shapeshifter Oracle, work your light. First of all, size difference. I know that seems negligible when it comes to shuffling though. I literally, I can't fucking shuffle these cards like that. I can kind of half ass do it a little bit, but like, do you see how it's, okay, I can do it, but I've also been shuffling cards for a long time. My point is they are hard. It takes, it like strains, it strains the muscles in my arms to try to grab these. The artwork's beautiful, the cards are cool, but they are super thin, super glossy, super big versus this deck, which is matte. See the difference in the sheen? And that matters in that A, um, they don't slip so much. It's when you're shuffling, really glossy cards tend to like slip apart. They're hard to kind of hold on to and get a grip of. Whereas matte cards are a bit easier. They're a bit smaller, they're a bit thicker, they're more durable. So that's kind of what I mean when I say, these are my favorite card stock. Of all the decks I own, it's my favorite. They're matte, they're a good size, they are good thickness, the art's good, everything's good. They're great, beautifully designed. Not that these aren't, by the way, these cards are also amazing and if you're looking at these and you're going, I want those ones. I will also link these below. These wouldn't be a deck that I would recommend for a beginner only because 
all the reasons that it's listed. It's not the best cart. I can't, do you see this? I can't even fucking hold on to them. Um, they're so big, it like takes up all of my hand strength to hold them. Um, but additionally, I think the interpretations on these cards are a, a little bit more esoteric and a little bit more woo-woo maybe slightly advanced there are actually three interpretations every one of these cards has three sections of interpretations versus this which is pretty straightforward um this is also a very positive deck and not all decks are like that and i think when you're first starting out i want you to have a good impression of divination cards and i think this is a good way to do that this one can get a little dark on you <laughs> all right i'm making a mess over here I'm making a fucking there's also this card chaos happening right now I also, I just want to be clear, I'm really not dogging these cards. I use them constantly and I do love them, but I wouldn't recommend them to be like the first deck you get. So if you're looking for cards to assist you in spiritual evolution, something um, easy to work with for starters, positive, um, bright and light and airy and fun, then work your light by Rebecca Campbell is amazing. Also, if you're going to get her deck, you should probably get her fucking book. I will link both below. So the last Oracle deck I'm going to recommend before I do a tarot recommendation is called Animal Allies. Now, there are a lot of spirit animal themed Oracle decks out there. And I would recommend if this one doesn't speak to you to get one that does. I do think, though, that working with animal archetypes is super beneficial in assisting a higher consciousness of existing. What I mean by that is we see animals and insects in our day-to-day -day lives regularly, but we don't really think about it. And I think once you start working with animal spirits and working with an animal deck, you start to be more aware of it and they start to present themselves to you more often. For example, um, when I was going through a particularly transformative period of time in my life, um, for like, I think it was a week or two weeks, every day I would go outside my front door and right outside of my front door on my mailbox would be the biggest dragonfly. And I'm pretty sure it was the same dragonfly every day. I actually thought it was dead. <laughs> At first I was like, is it just dead here? Just hanging out? I don't understand. Um, but dragonflies are symbolic of transformation. And in, that's what I'm referring to. Um, I also had, I, I live in a small town in Michigan and a very kind of suburban white picket fence neighborhood and I had a fox trot through my yard across and then came back and did it again not but like a month or so ago I had um four weeks there was a family of crows and every morning it would just be either on my trash can or in my yard I would wake up in the morning I would go outside and there would just be crows and they'd be like ah! and <laughs> when you start to work with animal totems and animal spirits you start to notice those things and you start to interpret those as messages. And I think doing that assists you in becoming more conscious and more connected to the natural world and less ingrained in our manufactured culture. Now, this deck, the only, I would say, maybe downside to this deck is that it doesn't have a book. What it has is a fold-out, which, I mean, it's fairly informative, but what I would recommend then if you're going to get an animal deck, if you're going to get this deck specifically, to get a corresponding book. So I have um, the Little Book of Spirit Animals, which I usually use in conjunction with these cards. Whenever I pull an animal card, I usually use this book as well as the fold-out. This has a lot more information in it. This fold-out has very little. So that's the only downside I would say to this deck, but I do think this deck was beautifully created. Um, the artwork is by Jess, what is her name? Jessica Swift. Jessica Swift. I actually followed her on Instagram because I was like, all right. Um, the inside of this box is You Were Not Alone, which I fucking love. And actually when I got these cards, I needed to see that so much <clears throat> that I legitimately cried. I'm not gonna lie. When I first got these cards, I was in a very lonely place and I opened up the box to find you are not alone in the bottom and I legitimately cried. Um, these cards, similarly to 
the Work Your Light deck are matte. They are good size. They're good thickness, good stock, not too glossy, um, shuffleable. It's a very big deck if you can see that. Like there's a lot of cards in here, which I like, a lot of varieties. I would hate to have an animal deck and have 20 animals in it. There's a lot. Also, um, Jessica Swift's artwork. I know it's personal preference. Artwork is very subjective. I understand that, but I really like her style. It's very, I don't even fucking know what you call it. It's painterly and yet youthful. And here's a turkey. Yeah, it's so cute. I love how like, oh, here's the crow. I love how like whimsical and yet, I don't know. There's, I, I don't know how to explain it. I just really am smitten with this girl's artwork and the back of the cards as i've already explained several times i'm very much about back of the cards and the back of these cards are nice i like them they're neutral they're gray they're ah, just good i think if you want a to be more connected i think if you're looking for a deck that will help you connect more with the natural world the animal allies deck is a really good one for that in the book will include any book. I like this one. It's not too big, but it has, it even has dragons. It has like mythical creatures in it as well as, as well as domesticated creatures and all kinds of shit in here. It's a really nice handy resource. And I use this in conjunction with the Animal Allies deck, which I will recommend. And I will link both below, obviously. Now I'm planning to make an entire video on why I choose the Rider deck. However, I could fill 10, 15 minutes with that easily. So I'm not gonna do that right now. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you want a tarot deck, if you don't have one, this is new to you and you want to get a deck, said it before and I'll say it again. We're on our own path, do whatever you want and don't fucking listen to me if you don't want to. However, that being said, if I was going to make recommendation, I'm gonna recommend Rider deck every fucking time, especially if you're just learning. Any other deck you get, oh, there's another one. There's a couple of really popular tarot decks that have like new trendy artwork in them that everyone seems to get. I see them on Instagram and social media all the time. All of those decks are going to be based on this fucking deck. And uh, all of the meanings in those deck are gonna be based on the symbology in this deck. So if you want to learn the meaning of tarot cards, this is going to be the way to do it. Simply because, let me give you an example. So this is the Seven of Wands, okay? I'm going to also put on the screen here two other Seven of Wands from other tarot decks. Now, the meaning of the Seven of Wands, there's a the, the basic meaning of the Seven of Wands is symbolizing that you are in battle, but you have the high ground, you have the upper hand, you are succeeding in this battle, even though it's exhausting. Now, do you see how that is exemplified here in this image? You have the guy, he's fighting, but he's looking down. And everyone else who's fighting him is kind of coming from below. It showcases that he has the upper hand. It's built into the imagery of the cards. Whereas other tarot decks are just artistic interpretation. They're just, it's just artwork, it's just fucking artwork. A lot of it, I will not say all of them because I don't know about all of them, but most of these kind of artsy new tarot decks, it's literally just artwork that's intended to be trendy and alluring so that you will buy it, but it doesn't contain the symbology, numerology, or anything that these cards are supposed to be based on. These cards are supposed to be based on uh, hermetic principles and understanding of archetypes and oh, numerology and astrology and all kinds of shit, okay? And these cards contain that. I'm gonna lock Everything that's in these cards, these cards were designed to include the meaning in the symbology, okay? Whereas 
other decks are just going to be artistic renderings and you are absolutely welcome to take whatever the fuck deck you want but i would recommend if you want an actual tarot deck and you want to actually learn tarot get an old school rider deck and learn it that way all right guys that's uh basically all i have for today if you found this video useful make sure you give it a thumbs up leave a comment let me know your thoughts subscribe to my channel i put out videos every wednesday and friday and don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I release bloopers and teasers and fun facts and all the inspirational quote and mean goodness. Um, and I will see you guys on the next video. Have a good day. Bye.